going on everybody if you're wondering what screen printing is and how exactly it's printed and priced this is the perfect video for you what's going on everybody my name is Bobby Danak and I am the owner of Aesthetic Imprints which is a custom apparel printing company specializing in screen printing out of my parents basement now in order to start printing you gotta have something to print on you gotta get some shirts something to print on I mean you can't just print on nothing so Here's our shirts. I'm just messing around. Of course, y'all know you need shirts. But here's the shirts we got today. We're going to be printing simple one color print on some t-shirts. It's about 40 or 50 t-shirts. Anyways, first thing I'm going to do is count up all the shirts. Make sure everything is here from the order. Double count, triple count, just to make sure everything is here. So let's run a little time lapse. All right, everybody, I got all the shirts counted up, folded up. Um, everything is here. I got all the numbers right here. Always double count, triple count, all your stuff. So now, let's go to print this. All right, everybody, now that we're in the print room with the screen print press, we're gonna go ahead and load this up onto the press to get it ready for printing. Now, we all know time is money, so turn your conveyor dryer on so that it heats up while you get the screens ready for print press. Let's not forget the flash dryer. Now that we got that heating up, let's load this thing onto the press and get it aligned to the center. But one thing before we do that, another, I'm sorry, I just keep bugging y'all, but quality over quantity. Let's replace this power tape and get some fresh power tape on here. That way you guys know what's up with this too. Now what this is, is power tape. It's basically just painter's tape basically, just a big layer. And it's just covering the power because you put glue on here, so when you go to print the shirts on here or hoodies or anything, all that lint gets stuck on here, and you really don't want it to get stuck on your actual board because cleaning that is a mess. So that's why you use pallet tape with water-based adhesive, not spray tack. I'll show you what's up. First, you want to go ahead. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna rip this out and show you guys what I do with one screen. I'll do the others behind the scenes. So now that that's out, we Kobe that thing in the trash can. I missed. You guys don't know that though. Well, now we got this. This is the power tape. You can get this at any screen print supply store. But for me, there is no store. I just got to go online. But you want to go ahead and... Get this on there. Now I'm throwing it on here. I'm basically just tacking it for a little bit right there. Ripping it. Getting the blade. Cutting. You want to make sure you don't have any bubbles. Just lay it flat. Start from the center. I like to hold it up a little bit and then, and then just press all this out. If you get that, just lift it up. You can use a squeegee for this, like a vinyl squeegee. And what I do is just take the blade around the whole corner Go around. Now I like to keep this edge long because that thing always peels when I go to take the um, shirts off. So I like I just like to tuck it in. It makes it cleaner, anyways. And then just get all the corners down. Now I'm gonna show you guys how I mark this up with center lines. 
you want to get a T-square and just touch it to that. That keeps it straight. My board is 16 wide, so I'm going to just make a line at 8. Make a line at 8. And then take it to the bottom, line those up, and just draw a straight line. That was a fail. And then what I'm going to do, I like to take it to 16 over here. So I like to make it like a straight line, basically. And then from 16 to do my um, chest prints, I go down, I think it was, honestly, I don't remember. Let me check on that. It was 12 down and then 5.5. .5. So, I go from 16 to 12 down, and then all the way to, what did I say? All right, all right. no, I'm being dumb. 5.5. .5. All right, one, two, three. So, I do 3.5 is what I meant. Draw this straight line. And then a straight line right here. So to get rid of all the confusion, because I just had a blur moment, we do the eight, because my palette is 16. So to get the center, you do eight. And then to get the left chest, I go left to 3.5. And I like to center the design right there. And then I'd like to bring the collar of the shirts right to this line. So from there, I go down four, and then that's where the chest would be is right here. Four down and 3.5 over. And that's how I do that. I know somebody asked what these lines mean and all, so here's the video on that. And just like that, as you can see, I got all the palettes done and they look so much more clean. This is where the seam will line up and then the chest print and all. So try this out. Let me know how it goes now. Now this is what I was talking about, water-based glue. This is what I'm gonna add. I actually have a video specifically on this glue and how to use it. You should search that up. Um, let's leave it right here in this corner. Go smash that video too. Run those views up, why not? You just need a little bit. You really don't need much. Start off with a little bit. You could always add more. Don't forget the bottom part. Steady hands. Shaking. Like I said. So you just add it like that. Throw it under the flash jar. And then when you come back, I'm going to leave it a surprise for you guys. That it's just going to be sticky. You're just going to have to trust me. But then I'm going to do the same for all four palettes. Do the same for all of your palettes. All you really need is a business card. I'm just using my business card. Because you don't need nothing special. It's just glue. Now don't go out there and use Elmer's glue on this. Because it sure looks like Elmer's, Elmer's glue. But it's not. All right, now that you got your glue on there, I'm going to try to keep this video as simple as I can get it. First thing you want to do now is to the screen. Tape up the corners of the screen so that no ink can escape from those corners because those are open. So anything that's not green or whatever the color your emotion is, cover that up with tape. Here's what I mean when I say cover up the sides with tape. One tip I'm going to give you is cover up this sidewall with tape as well. Because the ink is going to fly up there and you're just going to have to spend double the time cleaning it up. So why not just use a couple cents worth of tape and tape it up instead of worrying about the mess. Now let's load this up with ink. Well, first, let's get this aligned. 
these are the center marks that I threw on the design. And remember, this is the center line that we drew up. So now we just line that up to that. You can use the micro registrations to make it exactly center. As you can see, that's center. Now we'll slow this up with ink. I'm gonna be using FN Plastic Saw Ink. Plastic Saw Ink is actually a low cure ink. This is great for shirts. As you can see, I'm almost out. I need to re-up, but you just spread that onto the screen. Spread a decent amount. You can always add more, so don't put too much. That's pretty good with me. Then you want to grab your screen. As you can see, this is an aluminum screen. It's just better for your grip and the prints are better. These do cost a lot more than wood squeegees, but this makes the print better. So I highly recommend you get this. So now that that's set, let's do a print. This is what you all have been waiting for. So you want to load the palette up with a shirt, a test shirt. Cause you're going to do test prints first, just to make sure everything is going good. The way to screen print this is this is the opening of the design. So when I go to smooth this, lay this ink over this, and when I go to press it, it's going to um, go right through this and print that design. As you can see, there's a little bit of dry and emulsion right there. One tip to get rid of that is get some water, get a napkin, spray right on it, and then just... Rub that area. And that, as you can see, just got it out. So now, we're going to get the ink. Just float right over it. And then, push. You could push or pull. It honestly just depends. Up to you. You could pull it as well. But I like to push it for now, at least. I need to switch over to pulling instead but then you sit it under the flash dryer a couple seconds is all you need maybe five to seven seconds depending on if your flash dryer is warmed up yet or not as you can see that's perfect you want it to be sticky but not completely dry but i got ink on my hands so you don't want that because wet on wet ink it's not going to adhere you want it to be a little bit dry to the point that it's sticky but not dry that makes sense all right let's see it now see that's perfect i'm getting no ink on my hands but yet it's still sticky which is perfect for a second coat as you can see i need to add a little bit more palette adhesive because it's not clearing properly but other than that look at that that looks clean all right i just did that test print where is it? Wherever it is. Right here. And I threw it in the conveyor dryer, but I did my stretch test. And as you can see, it cracked slightly. And I'm not really happy with how that printed. So I added more tack on here. As you can see, it's more sticky. And you'll see how the screen clears a lot better now. So let's try this. As you can see, it all cleared. It's not stuck to the shirt. So throw it under the flash. You just want to get it sticky, not dry. That's perfect. Do our second coat to make it bright and opaque. As you can see, you see how this one is just clearing? It's not stuck to the shirt. That looks clean. Let's throw this under the, in the conveyor. See how this cures. Now that the shirt is out the conveyor dry, you want to let it cool off a little bit before you even try to do that stretch test. Because if it's hot, it's going to crack either way. So here's the first one that we did was the top one. As you can see, this one cracks. Let's see what the second one does. Can't even grab it. 
As you can see, that does not crack. And I'm stretching it. That doesn't crack, but the first one does. Quality in your prints. If it's gonna crack, make sure you go back and fix it up. Add more tack. In this case, I just need more tack and a better off contact, and that fixed it. Make sure you do that. Because there's no point of printing a shirt, giving it to the client, if it's just gonna crack in the wash or just bought off of a full show. Now that that's good, let's we'll start printing the shirts. Send it under the flash dryer for a couple seconds, let it dry. We bring it back, do the second print. Then we send this shirt into the conveyor dryer and it cures and that's it, boom. The final product is done. We don't touch the shirt unless it's to ship it up, box it up and send it to go. However, if you have a multicolor print, I'm going to show you in the next clip why it costs more because it's double the work. All right, now this is one of the hard parts to explain over text or email to customers or even people who only want one or ten shirts, but they want a multicolor print. You know who you are. I mean, I'm guilty of it too. When I was starting my brand, I used to want to get like one shirt. I want a sample shirt. Yeah, it's easy. I mean, people just think it's like a printer printing it so you can get a sample, but really it's just labor like this. So in order to do a multicolor print like this, for the other one, we did an Honest Pet. That was just a one color print. This is gold and black. So how exactly do you print that? Good question. The black is on its own screen. The gold is on its own screen. And in this case, this shirt also has a back print. So that's on its own screen as well. Now, I'm going to show you exactly how we screen print. Two colors. So you load it up onto the shirt, just like the first shirt that we did. Load it up, do the same thing. Let's print the black first. My squeegee is over here. So we print the black. Cool, so now we send it under the flash, same thing as the first shirt, so that we can flash it. Now the reason it's called a flash dryer is because it's gotta be quick, that's why it's flash. You just wanna do a couple seconds, call it a day. Then you come back and hit it with the block again. I like to hit it with print flash print for me. Colors are brighter and it looks better. Now, we flash that bad boy again. Just so that's dry so that we can come back and do the next print, which is the gold print. Now that that's dry in here, it's not fully dry, but it's sticky. I slide the screen. Here's my gold screen. I print that. As you can see, now I got the gold on here. Now the difference between this and the last shirt, which was a one color print, is I was done. With this black, I was done. It was call it a day, that's it. It just wanted one print, went through the conveyor, it's done. For this one, once, that, once the first print dries, you gotta come back and do the gold print. Now the gold print is tacky. I'm gonna add another coat onto it just because I like it bright and opaque. And it's better quality. And now that this shirt is done, the two color print is done. 
So the reason it costs more at the end of the day to do a multicolor print is because it's a whole nother screen and a whole nother print. So now, now that this shirt is done, what we're gonna do is throw this in the conveyor belt. Now, the next step, what if you have another location print such as the back? So now that the front print on that shirt is done, it's going to the conveyor dryer. It's going to cure the front print, but then when it's at the conveyor dryer, you got to, instead of picking those shirts, boxing it up, sending it to go, since they do want a back print, we're going to grab those shirts, load it back up here so that we can switch screens and do the print, back print all over again. So that, that is why it costs more to do multicolors and multi-locations. And now that this shirt is cured up in the front, we're gonna do what we were supposed to do with the back print is where you load it all back up just so you can print the back design. Same thing, this one's just a one color black. So. so you print it, throw it under the flash, flash it, remember flash means a couple seconds, five to eight seconds. Bring it back, do the next print. Now this shirt is officially done. We can send it in the conveyor dryer, do the final cure, and box it up and send it out to go. As you see, a multicolor and a multi-location print costs more because there's extra steps involved. Now let's say that also had a sleeve print. Once this shirt cures the back print, we gotta bring it back here and do the sleeve print. So that's why it costs more because it's just, when you have multiple, multi-print locations, it's doubling the work, tripling the work, because we gotta reprint it all again, print flash print, etc. And there it is, that's as simple as I can make it. I think that's pretty straightforward. I think you guys can understand it better now for sure. Everything you explain. So remember, multi-location print doubles the work. And multicolor designs, it's, it's a whole new screen for each, each design. So let's say you had six colors, it's going to be six different screens. Print, flash, print, sometimes you can do a wet on wet, but it's going to be six different screens at the end of the day, which is more work for us. On top of all the preparation work that we did with the palette, getting the screen made, adding tape, loading it up with ink. Now imagine doing all that preparation work for just one shirt. Like that's... That's honestly just a waste of our time. I don't mean to put it that way, but it's just not worth it for us. It's just not cost effective. It's just not time effective for us. That is why screen printing is mainly done in bulk. Also, before I forget, if you want an in-depth version of how this is printed, especially with the two, two colors getting it lined up onto the press, because both of the screens have to be in the exact same location when you go to print it so that everything is printed in the right spot. I highly recommend you checking this video out. It's in one of these corners. I think it's this corner for you all. I'll make it pop up right there. Click on that video. It shows you exactly how I printed this from start to finish. That's clean. That concludes the end of this video. I hope you all enjoyed this video on learning what screen printing is, how it's screen printed, and why it's priced the way it is. This video, I took you along with me and everything from start to finish on what it is, um, how it's screen printed, uh, even the different colors, why it costs more to do different colors, multi-location prints, everything. It's all a whole process, so it's not just a machine printing. Screen printing is manual labor. Um, and yeah, this is this is exactly why it's cost the way it is and why it's always done in bulk because of all the steps and preparation work that goes into it. That concludes the end of this video. If you all enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Um, and if you're out there trying to start a screen printing company or any brand or any business, what are you waiting on? Start your business. Stop, stop procrastinating and just start. You're going to regret this moment when you didn't start. You're going to look back into the past and be like damn i should have just started i mean what's the worst that's gonna happen you're gonna lose some money and that's all if you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up subscribe right here check out these videos stay in touch with me follow me on instagram at aesthetic imprints same thing as a youtube channel and i'll see you in the next one and remember no grind no glory